Final Cut Pro for iPad is coming. Apple has just announced that on May 23rd, Final Cut Pro will be available for the iPad. But as cool as this sounds, it does bring a few concerns, especially one thing in particular, which I'll mention in just a little bit. But for now, let's talk about what we know so far. For starters, the interface. It is not identical to Final Cut Pro on the Mac. It's a little bit of a redesign. It's really meant to integrate with the touch operation of the iPad. Because of this, it's unlocking some cool new features like live drawing. You'll be able to just kind of scribble whatever you want on the screen and have it animate automatically. It will have an HDR workflow and be compatible with iMovie projects. And thankfully, you will be able to use some key commands using a keyboard. It will also offer multicam editing with audio syncing. I could see that feature being especially useful for today's video podcasters. It's also got machine learning. On their website, it's kind of teasing some of these new features, but one of the ones that looks really cool is this new masking effect where you can basically mask out an object or subject in your scene without even needing a green screen. And there's a new auto crop feature, which will essentially help you repurpose your longer form content into short form vertical. Personally, I think this would be a super useful feature as it's something that I do manually all the time with keyframes because you've always got to kind of reposition your compositions when switching from wide to vertical. So being able to do this automatically would definitely save some time. And it will also include voice isolation, which if you already use Final Cut Pro on desktop, you've probably come across this feature and it's a great feature to have. It's also got some new title effects. I love that there's kind of a redesign of some of those native titles and backgrounds and effects and transitions that are being included with this new version of Final Cut. And it seems like there's this cool new feature for audio editing where you can just select a soundtrack, drag it further or shorter, and it will automatically retime it to adjust to that length. But from what I can tell, I think you'll only be able to do this with the audio tracks that they provide natively. I'm not sure that's to be determined. Thankfully, it does look like third party integration is on their radar and specifically it looks like Motion VFX is going to be a part of that because in the thumbnail on the website it's, uh, you know, featuring one of Motion VFX's plugins. So that's a really great sign to me as somebody who uses Motion VFX plugins all of the time. It also looks like they're putting some thought into how you can capture footage with the iPad using Final Cut. You'll be able to get into some different custom exposure controls and even using some monitor settings, including being able to utilize ProRes RAW. Now for the workflow, when it comes to editing, it looks like we'll have some color grading tools, key framing options, custom adjustments for cinematic mode, and the ability to send project files to the Mac. But from what I've heard, it doesn't seem like you'll be able to send it back. It's a big miss if that's the case. Final Cut Pro for iPad will be moving to a subscription-based model starting at $4.99 a month or $50 annually. Now, before I get into some of my main concerns and thoughts, I do wanna tell you about today's sponsor, me. If you've seen any of my videos before, you've probably heard me talk about lighting. And unfortunately, lighting can be a bit of a complex topic. And that's why I created my course, Learn Video Lighting. This is where I've put all of my lighting knowledge all in one place, step by step, to walk you through how to get a great setup for your videos. I'll show you the fundamentals, some cool tips and tricks, and help you save money with the best value gear recommendations. I've taken the best things I've learned about lighting over the course of my career and placed it into this power-packed course so that you can go further faster. You can check it out at learnvideolighting.com. All right, so that's like the overview of what Apple has told us about the new version of Final Cut Pro for the iPad. I'm very excited for where this could lead, but I'm also a little bit nervous and have a few concerns. Ultimately, I'm just a little worried that the desktop version may get neglected. I really hope not because I love using the desktop version and personally, I don't think I'm gonna be switching to the iPad version yet. As of right now, from what I've heard, it seems like we won't even be able to utilize external drives yet with this version, which I don't know how that would even be possible for somebody like me who's editing multiple YouTube videos at a time, you're gonna run out of space pretty fast. When you think of Apple, you think of the ecosystem. You think of how their apps like Calendar and Notes and 
everything really. They just integrate across all of your devices seamlessly. Well, as it stands right now, it doesn't seem like Final Cut is going to be this seamless integration. It really just seems like a completely separate app. This is even indicated by the different price points. And I'm not even mad about the subscription. Like, I, I think it's about time Apple's done the subscription. Of course, I don't want to subscribe to something, but the price seems pretty affordable, especially for content creators who this is kind of geared towards. And if you're running a content business, then it makes perfect sense to be able to spend a little bit of money in your business to get a super valuable tool. I would even be super down to start paying a subscription like this for the desktop version to get some new features. Again, I don't want to spend money on a subscription, but if it meant getting new features, new updates, and they were pushing it more, I would do it. To be able to have easy to use templates built in and, you know, AI auto-generated captions and just easy to use tools for beginners. Like I would love to start seeing some more of that integrated into Final Cut Pro, even for desktop. Personally, just a thought, if anybody from Apple ever finds this video and is listening, I think it would have been really cool and, and could still be really cool if you integrate the relationship between desktop and iPad a little bit more by allowing creators who do utilize the desktop version to use the iPad for controls. So we could utilize the Apple Pencil and do some of the cool features that can only be done on the iPad and just let it kind of work as a control for desktop. I am still very excited for what this could mean for the content creation space. I think this could be a great option for a lot of up and coming content creators who can start creating fully on an iPad, not needing a, you know, a separate camera and a separate computer, but they could just start utilizing a brand new way of a workflow. And I think that's pretty cool. So overall, I'm excited to see how this plays out, but enough about my thoughts. What do you guys think about this? Let's open up a conversation because I'd love to hear from you guys. Now, whether you'll be editing on the iPad or desktop version of Final Cut or even another video editing software, there are a few fundamental things to consider. If you wanna learn how you might be structuring your videos wrong and what to do to fix them, continue on to this video here. Thanks so much for watching and as always, stay creative. Peace.